Can you spell it one more time, please, for me? I mean, um, the first one is Rukewa R for Ron, U for okay, Umbrella. Well, yeah. Mm -hmm. Three for Kite. Got it. For got it. Yeah, okay, good, good, good. Okay, well. Okay. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, so we are going to open our second keynote session for today. And here we are with Dr. Rokiwi. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, let's take a, a warm welcome for him. Uh, please uh, applaud for him. Let me introduce him uh, so that he can start his keynote session. This is our second keynote session. Uh, we have Dr. Rukiwi on Win Ideas Pro Summit's Virtual Summit 2024 on International Women's Week. So let's extend a warm welcome to the extraordinary Dr. Rukiwi, an award-winning transformational leader with over 15 years of invaluable leadership experience. As an executive director with Maxwell Leadership's certified team, a transformational leadership expert, keynote speaker, and an executive coach. Dr. Uh, Rukiwi has been featured on esteemed platforms like the Leaders World Institute and the Maxwell Global Youth Initiative. His commitment to training, coaching, and mentoring the leaders from diverse industries is truly commendable. Having collaborated with exceptional female leaders across the various sectors, Dr. Rukiwi possesses first-hand knowledge of remarkable qualities women bring to leadership, passion, intensity, and ded dedication, empathy, determination, energy, and drive, to name a few. Recognizing the magic that unfolds wherever a woman leads, he is here to inspire and empower women to unlock their leadership potential and become the great leaders they aspire to be. Get ready for an enlightening and empowering session with the incredible Dr. Rukiwi Odimogo. Okay, so that's that's about Dr. Rukiwi. So how are you? So let's get started with your keynote session without delaying a bit. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, thank you for this opportunity. I want to start off by appreciating the organizers of this great conference, the Global Women Power Summit and Expo 2024. You have done such an incredible job, both before and even during this conference. I have been enjoying my, I've been enjoying the sessions um, since yesterday, and it has been great. It has been great. It has been great. Thank uh, you. That means a so, lot. <laughs> Yes. I just want to confirm, can you see my, my, can you see my PowerPoint? Yes, we can see that. So I'm signing off. Beautiful, the beautiful. Now. It's all yes. Okay. Thank you so kindly. Uh, so please, uh, I would like to, I am, uh, I am joining in from the beautiful island of St. Kitts and Nevis, um, which is one of the beautiful, lovely Eastern Caribbean islands. And so I would like you to just post on the chart wherever you are joining us from, uh, and I would love to know. Uh, so within a brief time that I am here with you, again, the theme is guiding women by influencing for next generation leadership. And the track that I'm going to be focusing on is growing as individuals, growing as individuals, growing as individuals. Um, how many of you here will agree with me? That's lovely, Maryland. Nice, nice, nice. How many of you will agree with me um, that growing should be a never ending journey? If you will accept that with me, just type a yes on the chart. If you, if you, if you say that growing is a never-ending journey, growth should be a never-ending journey. Just type yes to me in the chart. Yes in the chart. Beautiful, beautiful. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Growing should be a never-ending journey. And I want to say this at this point: that women are exceptional beings. Women are exceptional personalities. And I want to say this to you as a man: that without you, this world will will, will be so boring without you this world will be so empty without you this world will be so uninteresting and that is why i'm so excited about this conference i have worked with several le um, female leaders and i can tell you that women if there is one thing i have known about them they are passionate to the t they, they, they do whatever they do with so much passion and with so much love and so based on that i'm going to be focusing on growing as individuals uh, I am a John Maxwell, I'm an executive director with the John Maxwell team. And so I am a very passionate student about John Maxwell. 
And if there is one thing he says, is that leadership is influence. Leadership is influence, nothing more, nothing less. If you are influencing someone here, and I know that every one of you here on the call, you are influencing someone, you are automatically a leader. And so you may be leading at the family level, or you may be leading at the company level, or you may be leading a region, or an institution, or an organization. Whatever it is, you are a leader if you are influencing someone. And if that's the case, then you should know that for you to remain effective and efficient as a leader, there are two important questions you always want to ask yourself. The first question is, how do I grow myself? The second question is, how do I grow others? If you want to be effective and efficient consistently as a leader, then you must consistently ask yourself two questions. How do I grow myself and how do I grow others? The answer to the first question is going to be the focus of my presentation. And that leads me to this beautiful book written by Dr. John Maxwell, which is The 15 Laws of Growth. Now, I am definitely not going to be going through all the 15 laws within the brief time that I have, but I will just go, I'm going to be focusing on the first law for this presentation, but I'm just going to go through the laws real quick, just to give you an idea. If you want to grow as an individual, you need these 15 laws. These 15 laws, they are invaluable in your life. Nice to meet you, Alina, as well. So what are the 15 laws very quickly? Um, law number one is the law of intentionality, which will be the focus of this presentation. It's, it says that growth doesn't just happen. Law number two is the law of awareness that says you must know yourself to grow yourself. Law number three is the law of the mirror, which says that you must see value to add value. Law number four. Law number four is the, sorry. Law number four is the law of reflection, which says that learning to pause allows growth to catch up with you. Law number five is a law of consistency that says motivation gets you going, discipline keeps you growing. Law number six is a law of environment that says that growth thrives in conducive surroundings. Law number seven is a law of design that says that to maximize growth, you need to develop strategies. Law number um, eight is the law of pain that says that good management of bad experiences leads to great growth. Law number nine is the law of the ladder that says that character growth determines the height of your personal growth. Law number 10 is the law of the rubber band that says that growth stops when you lose the tension between where you are and where you could be. Law number 11 is the law of trade trade-offs that says that you have to give up to grow up. Law number 12 is the law of curiosity that says that growth is stimulated by asking why. Law number 13 is a law of modeling that says it's hard to improve when you have no one but yourself to follow. Law number 14 is a law of expansion that says growth always increases your capacity. And law number 15 is a law of contribution, which ties in to the topic again, that says that growing yourself enables you to grow others. So once again, the law I'm going to be focusing on is the law of intentionality that says Growth doesn't just happen. Growth doesn't just happen. Growth doesn't just happen. Growth doesn't just happen. If you want to grow as an individual, you must be intentional. And I love this picture here that says leadership growth is not natural. Your biological growth is natural. I mean, there was once a time you were just a zygote in your mother's fallopian tube, and then you became a fetus in her uterus. And then at some point after nine months, you were born from a childhood, from your childhood, you became a teenager, you became a young adult. And depending on where you are today in life, you are either a young adult or you are a full blown adult or you are already in the elderly stage. So biological growth is spontaneous. It is natural. But personal and leadership growth is not natural. And that is why the first law, and this is the most important law, for you to obey the other 14 laws, you need this first law. You must be intentional. Leadership growth is not natural. And I'm going to pick up this point here that says that there is a big difference between getting older and getting better. If you agree with me, type a yes on the chart. There is a big difference, a big difference between getting older and getting better. And they are not always directly proportional. I am pretty sure that you have met people, you have met people who are, you know, 10 years old in the job. And it doesn't mean that they have 10 years experience. Again, if you want to grow as an individual, you have got to be intentional. Can you post on the chat? I have got to be intentional. I have got to be intentional. Leadership and personal growth is 
intentional. You must intend to grow. And I just pick up this quote by James Allen in the book As a Man Think It that says that people are anxious to improve their circumstances but are unwilling, unwilling to improve themselves. They therefore remain bound. If I ask every one of you here now to post right now, to post on the chart, what it is that you would love to do in your life. There is something you want to improve on. For some of you, you want to improve on your finances. For some of you, you want to improve on your relationships. You want to improve on your connection with your children. You want to improve on your connection with your spouse. Guess what? For every improvement, the starting point is you. And as long as you don't improve yourself, you cannot improve any circumstance. That is why, again, the law of intentionality states that for you to grow, you need to be intentional. And so that takes me very quickly to the next component of this law, which are the growth gaps. Now, these are just, you can see them as excuses that people give for not taking their personal and leadership growth seriously. There are eight of them. And again, because of my time, I will just go through them as quickly as I can. The first gap is the assumption gap. And if anyone hits you, whatever hits you, please just post it on the chart. If any lesson hits you, if any code hits you, whatever it is that connects with you, feel, feel free to post it on the chart. And if you have questions, um, there will be room to take in your questions. And if this gap applies to you, you can just say, that's me. The assumption gap, the people in this gap, the people who use this excuse, they are the ones who say that I will automatically grow. But again, growth is not automatic. Growth is not automatic. I love this quote by Bruce Springsteen that says that the time comes when you need to stop waiting for the man you want to become and start being the man you want to be. Growth doesn't just happen. You need to be intentional. The fact that you have spent 10 years in a leadership position does not mean that you have 10 years of leadership experience. It is never directly proportional. You have got to be intentional. Gap number two at the, is the knowledge gap. The people in this group are the ones who say, well, yeah, I know that growth is good, but I don't know how to grow. I don't know how to grow. If that's you, you can type that's me on the chart. For those people, I have this quote by Loretta Staples. Loretta Staples says that if you are clear with what you want, the world responds with clarity. If you are clear with what you want, the world responds with clarity. So the true issue is not that you don't know how to grow. The problem is that you have not chosen where you want to grow. And if you happen to be in this group, all you need to do is to make a decision today that this is the area in my life. Which area in my life do I need to grow? And then look for resources. There are the, 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 this is the knowledge era. There is literally nothing you want to learn that you cannot find on YouTube, that you cannot find on Google. So stop giving yourself the excuse that you don't know how to grow. Just start by asking yourself, which area do I need to grow? Probably you need to grow in discipline. Good. Go on YouTube and type how to grow in discipline as a leader. And I bet you, you will have at least 10 free videos that deal with that issue. So if you're in the knowledge gap, that is for you. The, the third gap, the people in the third gap are the ones that say it is not the right time to grow, the timing gap. It is not the right time to grow. It is not the right time to grow. To those people, I like to give the quote of Martin Luther King Jr. that says that the time is always right to do what is right. The time is always right to do what is right. The time is always right. The best time to invest in your leadership growth was yesterday. The second best time is today. Stop postponing it because things change. Things change. Anything can change in your life. And the problem about procrastination is that you become a victim of the law of diminishing impact or the law of diminishing intent. The law of diminishing intent says that the longer you wait to do something you should do now, the greater the odds that you will never actually do it. The longer you wait to do something you should do now, the greater the odds that you will never actually do it. This is why. Stop waiting to a perfect time. There will never be the right time to grow. Just start immediately. Do it now. Because sometimes later becomes never. The fourth gap is the mistake gap. The people in this gap are the ones who do not want to grow because they are afraid of making mistakes. But guess what? You cannot succeed without mistakes. 
when you grow it means that you are constantly stepping out of your comfort zone it means that you are constantly trying something new it means that you are constantly exploring new horizons and because of that you are bound to make mistakes so stop being afraid of mistakes i love this quote by halbert einstein halbert einstein says that anyone who has never made a mistake has never tried anything new and this is speaking from one of the world's greatest scientists. So you should know that he knows what he's saying. Stop being afraid of making mistakes. Move. Everyone you celebrate today have their lives full of mistakes. But the difference between a success and a failure is that the success takes one more step ahead of their mistakes. And so stop giving that excuse. <laughs> are you with me so far? If you are with me, type I'm with you. The next group is the perfection gap. The next good gap is the perfection gap. The people in this gap are the ones who say, I have to find the best way before I start. I have to find the best way before I start. Mm. The painful truth is, when it comes to leadership and personal growth, the reverse is the case. You have to start before you find the best way. And so stop trying to find the best way because it doesn't work that way. It works in the reverse. You have to start before you will find the best way. I love this quote from the Christian Bible in Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verse 4 from the Amplified. He says, he who observes the wind and waits for all conditions to be favorable will not sow. And he who regards the clouds will not reap. So if you happen to be in the perfection gap, telling yourself you want to find the best way, stop it. Just start. Like Nike will say, just do it. The sixth gap is the inspiration gap. The inspiration gap are the people who tell themselves, I don't feel like growing. <laughs> I don't feel like it. I want to grow, but I'm waiting for that feeling. You know, that magical feeling. But guess what? That is how you don't feel like losing weight. You never feel like going to the bank. You never feel like saving money. You never feel like investing. You usually don't feel like doing what helps you go forward. It's just the human nature. You have to force yourself to achieve anything of greatness. And so if you happen to be in the inspiration gap, take these words of psychologist Jerome Bruner. He says you are more likely to act yourself into feeling than to feel yourself into action. I say it again, you are more likely to what? Act yourself into feeling than to feel yourself into action. Are you with me so far? The next gap, the seventh gap, is the comparison gap. The people in this group are the ones who always compare themselves with others. They find it hard to grow. They are discouraged from growing because everybody's ahead of me. Everybody has gone far ahead. If you happen to be in this group, these are my words to you. Stop comparing yourself with people. We are not on the same journey. Take this down if, you, if, you, if you're taking note. It is good to be inspired by people, but never you be intimidated by any person. I say it again. It is good to be inspired by people, but never you be intimidated by any person. If you want to be a growing individual, get inspired by people. But don't be intimidated. Stop comparing yourself to anyone. We are not the same. We don't have the same journey. We are not aiming for the same thing. The second thing I want to say for those people in group number seven is it is good. Get used to having people. Deliberately seek for people who are ahead of you. I love this quote by Confucius. He says, if you are the smartest person in the room, then you are in the wrong room. I say it again, if you are the smartest person in the room, then you are in the wrong room. You should not be. Always look for people who have gone ahead of you, who are better than you, who have accomplished more than you, because these people will always pull you. They will always inspire you to be more and do more and achieve more. The last gap is the expectation gap. The people in this group are the ones who say, I thought it would have been easy for me. <laughs> But guess what? Welcome to the school of life. Life ain't easy. I love this quote by Dr. Steve. He says, life doesn't get easier or more forgiven. We get stronger and more, resi more resilient. Life doesn't get easier. Nothing good comes easy. Success is not easy. If success were easy, everybody would have been successful. And in the same way, if personal and leadership growth was easy, everybody would have been growing in their lives. Everybody would have been growing in their leadership. So stop looking for an easier life. 
Just get tougher. Get used to it. When people are lucky in life, this is the formula. I love the formula. Preparation, which is growth, plus attitude, plus opportunity, plus action. That's doing something about it. Is what produces luck. So the next time you see someone who seems to be lucky, this is the formula. But you can see that the first step is always growth. And so I want to encourage you great women in this conference to take your personal growth seriously, to take your leadership growth seriously. It starts with being intentional. Forget about not having the money. Forget about not having the resources. Just decide today that you want to start growing personally and growing in your leadership. And you will find resources. There are resources everywhere. Because when there is a wheel, there will always be a way. And that is one of my guiding principles in life. There is always a solution to every problem. Money is not the answer to all problems. Sometimes what you lack is an idea. Sometimes what you lack are connections. If you don't have the money, you will have the idea. If you don't have the idea, you should know somebody who can help you. But stop giving yourself that excuse because as a woman, you are born to do great things. You have the capacity to do great things. But it starts with personal growth. And as I begin to wrap up my session, I would like to share with you, having established having established that personal growth is very important, how then do you transition? How do you have an established rather that intentional growth, you have to be intentional about your growth. How then do you transition from accidental growth to intentional growth? First thing you want to do beginning from today is to ask yourself the big questions. I like to strike the high on white while others ought. And so while this conference is going, while you are stimulated, while you are still motivated, make a, keep a date with yourself today. Schedule out time today to ask yourself certain questions. Where do I want to go in life? Where do I need to grow? What direction do I want to go? What's the farthest I can imagine? How long will it take? Ask yourself these questions and ask yourself these questions today. What do I want to accomplish? Where do I want to go? In which area or areas of my life do I need to grow? The second thing you want to do is to have the do it now attitude. If you want to grow as an individual, especially if you want to grow intentionally, have the do it now attitude. Stop waiting for tomorrow. As they say, yesterday is gone. Tomorrow is not promised. Today is all that you have. And that is why you call it the present. You call it the present. Have a do it now attitude. Stop waiting till tomorrow. Stop waiting until you get a leadership position. Stop waiting until they promote you at work. Stop waiting until you become a parent, until you become a spouse. Start growing because growth increases your possibilities. I love this quote by W. Clement Stone. He says, before you get out of bed every morning, say, do it now 50 times. At the end of the day, before you go to sleep, say, do it now 50 times. It will give you a sense of urgency. You can practice it where you are. Do it now. Do it now. Do it now. Give yourself that sense of urgency. Make a decision and do it today. The third thing you want to do to start growing intentionally is to face the fear factor. There are five fears that keep any one of us from achieving great things. The fear number one is the fear of failure. Some people don't want to succeed because they fear failing. For some people, it's the fear of trading security for the unknown. They, they don't want to leave what is familiar. For some others, it's fear of being overextended on resources. Fear of being overextended on resources. They don't want to get drained financially. For some others, it's fear of what others think. For some other people, it's fear of pushing others away. You don't want to lose your friends. I'm curious to know which of these fears impact you. Every one of us suffers from one fear. Every one of us suffers from one fear. But now ask yourself, which emotion is stronger? Which emotion are you going to feed? Because we all have one fear. Some of us is fear of fear. Some of us is fear of what others think. But are you going to, just as we all have fears, we all have fate. So are you going to feed your fears or are you going to feed your fate? You cannot feed both of them together. You have to feed one and starve the others. I am hoping that you would choose today to feed your fate because most of the times the fears are not real. Like somebody said, fear is just false 
evidence appearing real. So if you want to begin to grow intentionally from today, face your fears. And lastly, make this transition. People who grew intentionally, they insist on starting now. They don't plan to start tomorrow. They take responsibility to grow. They don't wait for growth to come. They learn before their mistakes. They don't learn only from mistakes. And that is why you want to start growing from today. People who grow intentionally rely on hard work. They don't depend on good luck. They preserve long and hard. They don't quit early and often. They fight for good habits. They don't fall into bad habits. They follow through, not just talking big. They take risk, not just playing it safe. They think like learners, not like victims. They rely on character, not on talent. And they never stop learning. In closing, remember that growth doesn't just happen. Not for you, not for me, not for anybody. You have got to go after it. And I want to say thank you. Um, this is my name again, Dr. Rukewa Jimogo. That's my email address and that's my website. And I am very, very active on LinkedIn. That's my LinkedIn name. So I would really love to connect with you um, probably after the conference. Please send me an invite on LinkedIn. That again is my LinkedIn name. I'll be very, very happy to connect with you and to get to know you more. And on this note, I close my presentation. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for listening. And I open up now for Q&A. Thanks. Thank you, Dr. Rookie. What a one. Thank you, Dr. Rookie. What a wonderful presentation altogether. So your insights on, on a key points are very uh, in, insightful. So we have so many questions from the audience, but I'll pick, pick one important question from our side. Okay. So I hope you will answer that. How do you measure success in your personal and professional life? And how does this perspective influence your mindset? How do you me measure success in your personal and professional life? And yes. how does this influence your mindset? Thank you so much for that beautiful question. That's why you should have goals. Your goals will determine, uh, and uh, when you read the acronym SMART Goals by Brian Tracy, one of the acronym is M, measurable. Your goals should be measurable. So for instance, um, let's assume that uh, my goal is to read a book for this month. And I break it down into small goals, that every day I'm going to read a chapter. And as long as I read that chapter every day, I can measure it. It could be financial goals. Let's assume that um, it's, it's, I want to save $10,000 in the next tw um, two years. And every, I break down that goal into a smaller, um, maybe every month for me to accomplish that, I'm going to save $500 or save $1,000. And so that is what you use to measure it. So based on what you want, maybe your goal is to be more disciplined. Part of your goals is going to be to get a book on discipline and then begin to give yourself goals that activate discipline in your life. So let's assume that, okay, to show that I'm more disciplined, I want to, I want to lose weight. I want to lose 10 pounds. And for me to lose 10 pounds, I am going to be going to the gym. So you have what you are going to do. I am going to be going to the gym every day, cutting down on my calories and doing X, Y, Z. And so you focus on that thing you do every day. And once in a month, check your weight on the scale. So whatever the goal is, always there's always there is always a metric to measure it. There's you you your goals have to be measurable, and so you give yourself something to measure it. If the person were to specify a goal for me, I could tell you what you're going to do just to check if you are. For instance, for discipline, I can tell myself to prove that I'm disciplined. Every day I'm going to read a chapter of a book, and no day is going to pass until I read that chapter. So that is how to measure it. Give yourself the goal determines how you are going to split it down. And then that goes further to determine how you're going to measure it. So I don't know if I answered that question. Um, it's, it's tied to the goal. The goal really determines what the person wants. And then you have metrics based on that goal that you will measure on a daily basis. And just focus on following through with the process. Thank you. Well, wow, that's a great answer saying that, you know, uh, targeting small goals first and reaching the bigger one. It's a nice approach for if anyone to, you know, uh, Rome is not built in a day. So, you know, thank you so much, Dr. Rukia. It's, it's so a much. wonderful session. You can post your contact card in the chat so that our, uh, you know, uh, our audience will reach out to you 
you uh, you can uh, uh, so ladies and gentlemen please reach out to dr rukivi on linkedin he's very active over there and um, he's always approachable please do reach out to him so that's our second keynote presentation from dr rukivi on win ideas pro summit's virtual summit 2024 on international women's uh, week so thank you so much i hope you enjoyed you so and you will be joining the other speaker sessions as well yes so, thank you i appreciate thank you and uh, we will join our next keynote session which is clay dart so please join the uh, next session